Millions and millions of dollars are put into creating epic blockbusters like Star Wars and the Dark Knight trilogy. Even with all that money, there are some huge movie bloopers that manage to sneak past directors, producers, and editors. Watch as extras folly, stunts go awry, and modern technology appears in period films. Don't make a mistake of your own. Click subscribe. You'll join our notification squad and be the first to know of new content. Can you guess which movie is represented by these emojis? Stay tuned at the end to find out. I told you what you wanted to know about Quantum. Yes, you did. And your friends would know that, so they're probably looking for you. Quantum of Solace. Before Daniel Craig took the mantle of James Bond, the films had gone through several years of over-the-top action and gadgets. Invisible cars, corny lines, and even a mission to space has been a part of the James Bond franchise. This was all minimized for the realistic and gritty feel that was presented with the new Bond in both Casino Royale and its sequel, Quantum of Solace. It's just too bad that the two movie mistakes nearly took away from the new Bond. Early in the film, Bond sits on his motorcycle. As dock workers go about their business in the background, look carefully and you'll notice the man with a broom. The extra tries to make it look like he's sweeping without knocking up any dust, but the broom is like a foot over the ground. The moment makes it look like he's some type of Broadway dance number rather than a serious action film like Quantum of Solace. Later in the movie, Bond is involved in a huge boat chase. He throws a grappling hook onto the enemy's boat and the boat goes flying through the air. But the scene makes sense because the grappling hook didn't actually attach to anything on the other boat. You're supposed to suspend realism for some of these action movies, but that one took it just a little too far. It was more realistic that the man was sweeping just minutes earlier. <laughs> Jurassic Park Jurassic Park was a revolutionary movie for the whole film industry. Aside from the incredible plot and breathtaking action, the visual effects were stunning to watch and still hold up today. Even with all of the advancements in the film, it was clearly behind on the technological advances we enjoy today. Computers feature the large box monitors, cell phones aren't even a thing, and some of the video technology is a little sketchy. It's a long way away from the touchscreens, holograms, and gyrospheres featured in the sequel, Jurassic World. Years before millions of people could instantly chat on Skype, Jurassic Park attempted to recreate the same type of scene using outdated technology. As Dennis Nedry sits on his messy desk, he attempts to make a call to his getaway driver. The call is made to look like Nedry is watching him through a live surveillance camera, but closer details show that this is not the case at all. At the bottom of the window, it's easy to tell that this is a pre-recorded video playing on a timeline. The mistake is easy to miss, but any type of computer user can clearly see the play lines on the bottom. Long before YouTube, this primitive video player is actually a sign of the future that's to come. Maybe if Nedry realized that it was a pre-recorded video, he could have avoided his fate at the ends of a Dilophosaurus. It's not who I am underneath, but what I do that defines me. Bruce? Batman Begins. Christopher Nolan took the cinematic Batman into a whole new territory with Batman Begins. The flashy camp style of the previous films were eliminated to showcase a dark and realistic view of Gotham City. With so many new things to take in, it's pretty easy to miss a pretty obvious mistake that the filmmakers could have avoided. When Batman takes out the Tumblr for the first time, it causes some chaos as it rumbles through Gotham City. Not only do the villains start running in fear, but the police don't know what to make of the vehicle. During one moment, an officer tries to stop the armored vehicle by pointing a gun at it and threatening to shoot. During in another moment, another officer asks for a description of the tumbler when it comes roaring past him all of a sudden. The only problem? They're both the same guy. There are clearly some continuity problems with the cop, unless he suffers from some type of short-term memory loss. Maybe another actor quit or something, but luckily for most viewers, the fast-paced action allowed little time to focus on the twin set of cops used for both comedic moments during the tumbler scenes. With a budget of $150 million, the film could have squeezed out a few extra bucks for a second police officer. I'll look into it. Gladiator. Taking place in the year AD 180, Gladiator is filled with barbaric action that includes swords, armor, and horses riding in chariots. This is what the Roman Colosseum was built for, as the movie accurately recreates a number of real battles that took place there. Filmmakers went through the painstaking process of making everything as authentic as possible, but one huge mistake was left in the final cut of the film. One of the Maximus' first big fights is a recreation of the Battle of Zama. Chariots, spears, and weapons all become a huge part of the chaos during the epic fight scene. As Maximus gains control, he manages to take a few chariots out along the way. When one of the chariots tips over, we see the driver fly out of the side and reveal some modern 
modern technology that was hidden by large sheets of fabric. The huge tank that is shown inside the chariot is not a gas tank. It's actually an air compressor used to blast the wheel off the chariot and time it just right to make it look authentic. The film uses a lot of CG effects, so it's surprising that they didn't decide to cover this up. Either way, it's a big movie mistake. Or, Commodus' character is actually a time travel with the ability to borrow futuristic technology for his own pleasure and entertainment in the bloodied grounds of the Colosseum. You don't know what you've wrought upon yourselves. What? What is it now? What are you talking about? I mean, I'm doing stuff out of my league here. Transformers Age of Extinction. For the fourth film in the Transformers franchise, Michael Bay decided to mix things up a little bit. Mark Wahlberg stepped in as the new lead character. Transformer Dinobots were introduced, and we got to witness some epic battles between the fighting machines. One of the bigger battles in the movie featured Optimus Prime taking on Galvatron. As the two robots pummeled each other and sent sparks everywhere, Wahlberg's character Joseph attempts to help by carrying his giant gun and blasting Galvatron away. The character tries to find cover behind a large brick wall. This is shown through a large wide shot where Wahlberg runs up to the empty wall. A few seconds later, a random person is shown on the side of Wahlberg. Before we even get to know his name, he's blown up as an explosion goes off right next to Wahlberg. Clearly, this stunt person or extra was not supposed to be in the shot. It was an odd placement to see this random body get blown to bits. It completely takes you out of the scene and makes you wonder who the random victim was. Upon rewatching, the mistake is so obvious that it's any wonder why it's still included in the film. Was it a film stunt gone wrong? Was the big budget epic too much to edit the guy out? Either way, it's just another victim in the war against the Transformers. I've paid you a small fortune. And this gives you power over me? The Dark Knight Rises. Many superhero fans love Batman because he's able to fight crime without any superpowers. Trained with incredible combat skills, Batman is able to fight off foes and use a mix of gadgets to take down some of his greatest enemies. Along with battling the Joker, Bane, and Scarecrow in the Dark Knight trilogy, Batman also comes across several nameless henchmen that he must make his way through. Swift kicks and punches send these henchmen flying, but in some cases, Batman doesn't even have to lay a finger on them. Clearly some type of timing is off with the stuntmen, because there are two points in The Dark Knight Rises where the bad guys just send themselves flying through the air. It first occurs during a scene where Catwoman and Batman are teaming up to fight off a group of thugs. One background performer, at least 10 feet away from Batman, flies backward and falls to the ground unconscious. Later, a guard with a gun has a chance to shoot at Batman, but flies backwards when the hero is actually turned away from him. Maybe the film should have used a few more of the rapid fire and shaky cuts that were a signature for the fight scenes in Batman Begins. It could have helped cover up the stunt mistakes featured here. You will need this. The Last Samurai. Tom Cruise has been on several cinematic adventures, but even with all his impossible missions, battles with mummies, and a journey as Jack Reacher, nothing compares to his time fighting as the last samurai. The film was well told as Cruise joins a group of rebellious samurai to stop a corrupt Japanese government from destroying their history and tradition. After training, learning the way of the samurai, and getting sobered up, Cruise is ready to lead the troops into battle. He does this by riding on horseback, easily galloping to different areas of the battlefield. Just like any war, the horse that Cruise rides upon is unpredictable. As he tries to settle the horse down, it lets out a big kick that nails one of the extras right in the lower stomach. Hopefully the extra's armor was legitimate and not some cheap prop, because that horse kicked hard and furious. The moment went by so fast that it's hard to see the first time around, and clear why movie editors probably missed it. With great aim like that, maybe the soldiers should have relied on the horses to do battle rather than just their swords. Shortly after the horse kick, the extra manages to recover, but he was clearly rattled by the situation. At least he didn't ruin the take. Obi-Wan. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. Star Wars. George Lucas is infamous for editing and enhancing his previously released films. Once he realized how powerful CG technology could be, he applied it in every aspect of his film career. There's one mistake that Lucas has never removed from his films, and actually turned it into a huge part of the Star Wars lore. In the original film, entitled Star Wars A New Hope, a group of stormtroopers are marching down a hall and go through a small door opening. One of the stormtroopers makes the mistake of clocking his head against the door, but brushes it off and keeps marching on. The goofy moment is hard to spot, but has been replayed over and over again once fans notice the mistake. In later releases, a sound effect and brief audio was added to make the scene feel even more authentic. 
George Lucas decided to make that error a big part of Jango Fett's history. In Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, Jango Fett is seen climbing onto a ship when he hits his head on a closing door. Since he's the only one that they cloned to create all of the stormtroopers, it's only natural that they have a little bit of clumsiness to them. This also makes it extremely fitting that Jango Fett dies by getting decapitated with a lightsaber. Now, there's not much else for his head to bump into. Well, thanks for watching! What mistakes do you think are the biggest? Are there any that we missed? Should these be removed from future versions of the movie? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe to Screen Rant on YouTube so you can stay up to date with our awesome videos. And the answer to our emoji quiz is...